yeah shout out to to all the great work that you're able to do during undergrad and i, I can only imagine because you're, you're talking about first going study abroad experiences and really getting an understanding for like global health and that kind of perspective um the organic chemistry which i think is the bit of all <laughs> public health people's existence <laughs> so I, I completely relate with that as well especially organic chemistry too if you made it that far like shout out to you um <laughs> <laughs> and and then and then this really like delving deep into building out like or, or doing work coordinating work and to your point of like, getting work study experience while you're doing this to really like formulate all the different public health kind of actual tangible skills that that you're building out um as as you're going forward and and i think like this is awesome that you're able to do that and i believe also during this time is when you you first piloted more than a minority the curriculum so i could imagine just how all of that information kind of shaped and just helped you um to, to say okay like hey, this is something i can do let's um get the food and get all the other good things and get people together so um i, I really like you have a, a really great undergrad experience that I think should be spoken more about and, and shared more with, with people because it really illuminates what you can do and like how that shift from wanting to become a medical doctor, physician to public health professional, how that's still possible two years into your undergrad degree, et cetera, et cetera. So I appreciate you sharing and raising all of that up. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, in general, when you go to college, a lot of your dreams and aspirations may change. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think you have to be focused on your skills and building community. I think a lot of these opportunities came because a friend was like, oh, Jasmine, I think you should do this. You'll be really good at it. Or you're really good at being organized and making lists and telling people what to do. Can you come tell us what to do? Because this is what we want to do. And so... Um, I think everyone has some really great, just natural things that they're good at. Lean into what you're already good at. Um, I think it took me a while to accept that fully, but um, I think I'm really good at public health. I'm great at speaking. I'm great at bringing people together. I'm great at like analyzing things. And public health is the world where those things like really come together. And so in undergrad, I just really learned uh, or got the opportunity to sharpen those skills. And I think people should really lean into sharpening the skills that they're already really good at um, when they go to college. Yeah, I couldn't can agree with that more. And then you said from your undergrad experience, you then went into, well, you were like, where are the jobs, the jobs aren't coming to my email. And then you realize that you had to do some nannying. And then you applied to the Masters of Science in Public Health at Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Maybe walk us through that, that process of graduating and then working, sla working slash looking for jobs slash applying for graduate school. And how did all of that kind of like play out for you? Yeah, so I graduated and I was still working with the Community Building and Social Change Fellowship. So that kind of extended through the summertime. Um, that ended, I did get like a part-time-ish job at United Way of Greater Atlanta doing some fundraising. But once again, that was like a six-month position. It was a very short program. And so I was still nannying on the side because it didn't pay that well. And so I'm like, okay, I can't keep working two and three jobs just to pay my rent, my car note. And so this is not the quality of life that I want to have. So what am I going to do? And I realized that a lot of the things that I was applying for, they were telling me I need more experience or that I wasn't qualified. And so I decided that I was going to go back to school. But this time when I go back to school, it is going to lead to a job. Like when I graduate, I'm going to have a job when I walk across that stage. And so I looked into master's programs that had that. And one of my professors had mentioned Johns Hopkins and I looked and I already really liked policy. And so I applied. And funny thing is I applied to Hopkins and I was like, I don't know if I'm going to get in. This is like the number one school. My GPA I felt wasn't the greatest because I did not do well in organic chemistry. <laughs> um, brought that GPA down a little bit. 
And I also applied to George Washington uh, University because they also had a similar program. Apparently, I messed up a few things in the application. It was never submitted. Didn't know that until I never got a decision from them. But luckily, I got into Hopkins. <laughs> and so, yeah, that was just what was meant for me was to go to Hopkins and do this program. And I'm really grateful that I had that experience because... One, the people that I met there, like I have a group of 12 friends that are in different, I literally met them, I think like my third day of school at a barbecue. Food is a theme in my life <laughs> <laughs> at a barbecue. And they are also, most of them are black. And we met at um, a gathering for black public health students, but we are all in different programs. And so we really like just supported each other and held each other accountable for our time at Hopkins. And it really shaped my experience there because Hopkins is a predominantly white institution that is in a very black area, but the institution itself can be not necessarily very inviting to people of color. And sometimes they are not necessarily understanding of some of the cultural things that are being experienced by people of color. And that can also be said at Emory, which I think at right now, as we see what are happening around college campuses around the world, let's be very mm -hmm. honest, as we see what is happening to students as they are protesting, this is very disheartening to see how they're treating them. And these things were going on while I was also getting my education while I was at Hopkins, the George Floyd situation was happening. And so history tends to repeat itself as these things go on. And I think it's important to use your voice as you are at these institutions. And it is an honor to be there, but also understand that you are not just representing, you're not just there to be just a representation, like your voice matters and that you're learning the things that you're learning so that you can make a difference. But you also have to balance like being safe, protecting yourself, protecting your mental health. And so I also wanted to just make that statement that it is difficult being a person of color in these spaces. And it's not just like an easy cakewalk and that they're very accepting and loving and they want you to be there. Like you will experience racism you will experience sexism you will feel like you don't belong there will be people that don't want you there and that's okay you do belong there you have the right to be there just as much as anyone else and you have to find your tribe and your people so that they can support you while you do these things having a community is so important for all stages in your life but especially stages that are difficult like going to grad school um especially in institutions that mightn't always be welcoming to you as a person um just because of your existence and and uh it's it's interesting that you share that and I wouldn't get into a tantrum but I've read very similar things from other people in <laughs> these similar institutions mm -hmm. and and I think like to your point is like you yes, you are there, you are there to learn, but you're also there to shape the institution with the voice and with your lived experience because we are all better because of the diversity, because of the, the various voices. So uh, continue to use your voice in, in whatever way that is necessary. I would definitely advocate for that because especially in public health, that's something that we need to continue to do to hold systems institutions accountable uh, so so appreciate you sharing all of that yeah